Today, you're going to get a full breakdown of this fund that you can actually invest using CPFOA. You know, not many funds are qualified using CPFOA. Funds must firstly be low cost enough. Secondly, funds must have a good enough performance that CPFOA approves of. Now, you know, when it comes to investing, many a times I suggest in this pandemic to be broad based and globally diversified simply because we don't know which sectors or which country equities are going to do well in over the next couple of years while things recover. So today, this fund exactly qualifies for it. And if you're interested, stay on for it. Hi guys, welcome back. Today, we're going to talk about this fund and this fund is under the United Global Quality Growth Fund. I don't hold that name further back from you because today the discussion is for you to understand how it works for you when it comes to investing wise. Let's pull out quickly to see over here you realize that top allocations for this fund is towards IT, 30.82%. The next highest allocation is healthcare. You know, if we were to throw a guess which sectors are least affected, of course, it is IT and healthcare from this pandemic. The rest of the sectors, you know, are pretty uncertain in a lot of ways. The next part to understand from this fact sheet, which is uh, updated as of March 2020, you realize that top allocations in terms of geography is in US, 63%. The rest is broken down into different developed countries, uh, which include Switzerland, China, Hong Kong, uh, Taiwan. So what you can understand when you get a global fund is it breaks down to not only uh, US, but it gets you global equities, which means you kind of diversify you know, your risk further. Uh, if whichever countries see better growth, better recovery rates from this pandemic, hopefully the fund actually picks that up for you. Now let's try to understand why is it called Global Quality Growth Fund because the name is so long and suggests a lot of things. This explains for you very easily. Global because as you have seen the allocations, there is uh, allocation not only to US but to all other countries. You know They believe in potential to grow revenue and earnings are no longer constrained to a country itself. They are actually looking to hunt and pull in companies which fit their investment philosophy for you to get invested. Hopefully that delivers better returns and pure index investing. The next part of it is quality. Why are they trying to qualify quality? High quality companies that generally have a clean balance sheet and high free cash flow are going to come through their filter. That means companies like IT firms, like you know, uh, as we know, Facebook, Amazon, uh, Microsoft actually speed out a lot of free cash flow. But companies like Tesla, hopefully don't get through the filter. Tesla is a high growth, but don't have a lot of current earnings right now. Hopefully, you know, you'll see companies that belong in that safer sector. Tesla, where it's you know, still uncertain, do not come through that filter. And indeed, it's not in that top 10 holdings itself. The next part is growth. They are looking for companies you know, can grow organically better than a country's GDP. Now let's move back to you know, why this title of this fund actually allows you to get invested using CPFOA. It's qualified using CPF as of December 2018. I'll pull out for you to quickly see over here. It is qualified and you can find links below just in case you want to validate that. Uh, in any case, it's defined as high risk because it's equity and it's broadly diversified. You know, uh, this is not the only uh, uh, global equity fund. I'll, I'll also quickly show you over here. This is the list of global equity funds. And you can see over there, the top one, I, I filtered them based on one year performance. Uh, simply because this fund with CPF category only has one year track record plus. You realize that the top performer is actually Nico EM Shenton Global Opportunities Fund. But uh, we always select funds based on a lot of matrix, it's not just one year performance. Although Nico EM Shenton has done pretty well for their global fund, today's focus is mainly on the United Global Quality Growth Fund and it still delivers returns for you. I'll, I'll show comparisons versus SP. I'll show you also details versus dimensional fund, just in case you're curious about it also. Now let's flow back to why a fund can qualify for CPFOA. CPFOA has a lot of stringent criteria. It must be sufficiently low cost. It must be having a good enough track record, and uh, it must have uh, you know a, a, a three-year period. If I'm not wrong, uh, for you to qualify for a fund to actually apply to get qualified, and thankfully this is a solution for CPF investments. I've received many comments before uh, in this community that hey, can can I invest in U.S. stocks using CPF? The answer is no. As of now, you can only buy Singapore stocks. You can buy Singapore STI ETF. And you want to get invested in US equity, uh, you have to use cash. So the idea of this is you can actually buy a fund that gives you this global exposure, that gets you US equity. It's so much simpler. You don't need to stock pick. You don't need to understand taxation and stuff when it comes to a different uh, country's equity. So it's so much easier when you buy a fund and the fund actually delivers much better than you can 
uh, stop pick yourself most, for most of the time. So with that, I hope you understand that uh, the way moving forward with CPF investments may be easier. You buy funds that actually have done, you know, uh, or, or actually can deliver what you're looking for in terms of investment wise. Let's move to explain a little bit deeper onto this United Global uh, Quality Growth Fund. It's actually not managed by UOB, just in case uh, I haven't mentioned it already. It's actually managed by Wellington Asset Management. Wellington is actually, this, this fund is actually run by John Boselli and he's actually the manager for this fund for many years. He's actually a 30 year track record as I, I will show you over here in this uh, image. And what you can see is uh, he has actually delivered returns, 114% upside market cap capture and downside avoiding some downside risk. So that means selection of stock, that means certain ability with a fund manager, hopefully he can continue to deliver that for you. Now, uh, when we do research, we should always look for a longer track record history, correct? Because you're going, looking to invest long term. And while past performance does not determine future, future results, it is still one of the best logic to assess what is the skill of the manager, what is the strategy of the fund itself. And when we look at the track record of Wellington, it's pretty good. It started in May 2011, I'll pull for you quickly see. And since inception then, it's done 13.2%. Now this is outperforming its world benchmark, pretty good. Uh, but your next question might be, why can't we just buy the Wellington? Why must we buy through UOB asset management and then they feed it there? The simple reason is because it is, this Wellington fund is only available for accredited investors, which means they are looking for a minimum 5 million in terms of investments, if you want to buy directly into the fund. That's why when you buy through UOB, you like feed in to UOB and then they will pass it on. UOB actually uh, works with uh, Wellington Asset Management for quite a few of their equity funds, from my understanding. So I'd like to also pull back this, this uh, snapshot that we have seen previously on the March 2020 fact sheet. You realize that top holdings, now let's drill, drill down deeper on them. Top holdings include Microsoft, include El Apple, Alphabet, which is Google, Amazon. These are the biggest IT firms and very likelihood they'll survive the pandemic really well. But the next one, which is interesting, is Nestle. As this is a global fund, it can invest in you know, companies that are big cap and yet having a growth overseas. And Switzerland, of course, is not in US. And Nestle is actually listed in Switzerland. I, I always thought Nestle is a US, I don't know why, but that's, that's me. But Nestle, when, when uh, we look at it deeply, it's actually from Switzerland, listed there also. Then what you can also see is there's also uh, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing, which is TSMC, the world's biggest semicon uh, producer. You know, Semicon is required in smartphones, which is what I'm using to film this. And I'm sure you're also uh, using smartphones to view a lot of your videos as well. And also number 10 is Alibaba. Alibaba listed in Hong Kong, listed in US. So uh, fund has the mandate to look for global, look globally for, fund, for companies that qualify for quality, for growth. Uh, while we also understand what is his allocations, the next part which I'll show you in this uh, snapshot over here is what it was his holding in 2018. 2018 Again, end of 2008 was when it qualified for CPFOA categorization. And we can see over there that Microsoft, Amazon, Alphabet was still the top holdings, but then you don't see Nestle, you don't see TSMC within that. So that, those investments seem to be newly changed in. And not only that, I also realized that the exposure to, to IT sector is bigger than what is shown over here in, back in 2018. So possibly this is a good allocation, Possibly that is why it's still performing pretty well as of this pandemic. So without further ado, let me show you the one year performance. All equity funds have came down to an extent from this pandemic because equity markets so off globally. So if we compare it versus S&P 500, which is US only, this is a global. So if we compare it versus S&P 500, it's pretty good. Uh, as you can see over here, this green line is the United Global Quality Growth Fund. And the, the red line is actually S&P 500. I also pull on Vanguard's S&P 500 index ETF to show you if you want to buy an ETF that's for S&P 500, there is actually one to do so. But if you are you know, uh, trying to invest with CPFOA, then the only solution is United Global Quality Growth Fund. Or you should you know, just uh, view them and see what it delivers in terms of returns. That's the main purpose of this chart. Pretty much similar, although slight outperformance, but the main difference comes in when we see the three-year chart. The green line is the United Global Quality Growth Fund. It has outperformed S&P, this is factually, and will it continue to do so? Nobody knows, but as of now, track record is pretty good. 
fund manager has done pretty well in terms of selection. The next part I would like to also compare is with the dimensional fund. I've actually mentioned in the previous video, I don't know if you've seen that before, if you haven't looked for that, because dimensional funds are something that I also strongly recommend. Dimensional is one that is the dimensional core equity fund. And I, I curiously did a comparison for a rough three year period. As we can see, uh, in this dimensional core equity sing dollar, the track record is starting from September 2017. Using this tool, which is sing dollar versus sing dollar, you realize that the green one outperforms the red one. The green one is the United Global Quality Growth Fund. And uh, while dimensional has its merits, uh, the, the outperformance is quite significant, as you can see over there. It's not even close. But moving forward again, that's the real question. It's not really past performance, which is a better one. But nonetheless, this echoes a few key points, which I'll pull out for you to quickly see back over here. When you select funds, we're always looking to maintain low cost. That's why dimensional is such a preferred idea. And using the CPF, those that qualify, which I've shown you at the start of the video, I'll pull out for you quickly see over here. United Global Quality Growth Fund is not the number one performing in terms of one year performance. It is the lowest in terms of expansion ratio. It's a fairly decent fund size. That is why when it comes to CPFO investing, pretty good a solution, gets you global equities, and as we've seen, outperforms uh, S&P 500 even. So with that, hopefully it gives you a picture how you can actually get invested using CPFOA or using cash if you're on a global allocation. I've mentioned many times in this community, invest globally, invest diversified because we don't know which sectors will recover the best. Neither do we want to stop pick too much. It's not easy when things are so volatile. That's something I share with private clients. And again, if you're interested, look for links below. I can do a one-to-one -one discussion on how to build a portfolio for you and run it for you moving forward. Ideas are always easy to buy, but managing it, surviving it past the pandemic is the real value that I give to private clients. And hopefully, if you're interested, look for my link below. And if you haven't subscribed, smash that subscribe. We'll be launching videos every week like this to share a few ideas. With that, I'll sign off. Take care and goodbye.